That's right, it is autumn here in the northeast, mid-Atlantic states, and that means we are doing a special on trees. Find out how we do trees here on the Allegheny Northern coming up right after this. scale and yes if you have watched a handful of my videos you have noticed that this train has not moved um, no it is not a sign of the times and the current supply chain crisis here in the US it is I have not run trains in that long I know it's a shame and I promise to rectify it this weekend but I digress we are talking about trees and as we move into autumn here in the mid-atlantic region and the Northeast, we are going to be faced with a bunch of colors like this. So I wanted to show how I take a Woodland Scenics tree armature and make it uh, better. So before we get started, this is not a knock on Woodland Scenics. It may sound like that, but that's not my intention. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the folks at Woodland Scenics and the products that they do put out. They are definitely a... Uh, the front runner as far as scenery material so before we get started let's make that very clear now where i think they struggle is in the tree department and what you're looking at here is a hillside and it has a collection of trees on it it is scenic express trees those are the trees that pop right now they are the bigger trees they look like they actually have leaves on them there's a good good look at them right now they are not only the Scenic Express armatures, but they also have the real leaf foliage, and they look fantastic. Uh, the pine trees we're going to ignore for now. Two reasons. One, I can't remember who they're from, and two, we're not making pine trees, so let's, let's skip over this for now. And then we're going to talk about Woodland Scenics and their clump foliage. Yeah, it's that stuff right there. Not exactly beautiful up close. It just looks like, well, yeah, it looks like a clump and there's another clump but now that you're looking at the clump in comparison to a super tree you go okay yeah that looks really different but i want to pull out here and show you how it disappears in the hillside okay so why am i showing you that because that is exactly what i intend to use woodland scenic trees for they are background trees for me because they don't have the same level of detail now, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Um, you're looking at a Woodland Scenics armature right there. Kind of looks uh, bulky, basically. It looks like it belongs in the background. Where you don't get the, let's say, the thinning appearance. Or the bare appearance. And the fine detail of these types of armatures. And, of course, you could always put some snow on them if you'd like to, but these are not what we're talking about today. Everyone knows what Woodland Scenics is. And I was not aware of this, but I guess there are certain, because this is a plant product, there are certain countries where you cannot import these um, because, you know, non-native species and all that sort of stuff. So not everybody will have access to the Super Trees product. Okay, well, now that being the case... How do we get around that? How do we make an armature look like it is yeah, a little bit better? So that's what we're going to focus on here today. Okay, don't mind the scenery material here on my shirt. Uh, that is not the focus of our video. Today's focus is these guys. Okay, so these are the armatures that you get from Woodland Scenics. They come in a bag like this. You can find them. There are different sizes. You can find the size that is appropriate for your scale. And then you can uh, 
you know, go from there. You can't get them bigger. They're not, they're, they don't have a scale on them. They just tell you how big the tree is going to be. So the first thing I do is always separate the base from the tree itself. And I'll be honest with you, other than using the base for modeling, I am not going to ever use this base again, because what I'll do is I'll drill a hole in the layout and put the tree right into the ground. But for what we're going to do here today, this is fantastic because it holds it upright. So we have a very flat tree and you'll notice that there are mold injection areas shown on here and uh, you can remove those with a knife and sort of cut them down a little bit. The plastic that they use is a fairly robust plastic because it does bend so it takes a fairly good knife to do that um, and you're still going to be left with a, a shape that's not realistic so I don't bother doing that. Uh, you can if you want to, but then the next step is that you are going to take these armatures and you're going to twist them into the shape of a tree. They twist, they bend, they, you can move them any which way you want, and they are fairly robust, so you can do it a couple of times until you get a shape that looks realistic. Now, these are not necessarily to represent all of the branches that would be on a tree. They are like the main branches. And if you go out into your backyard, uh, assuming that you're somewhere where you have deciduous trees, and you take a look, you're going to see that uh, you will notice bigger branches and the little branches sort of, they blend into the, the scenery, so to speak. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to get the branches into a shape that is sort of I hate to say tree shape, but, but tree shape. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have everything covered to a point where it's, you know, it, 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 there's three, four circle sides. All right. You know, you're not, you're not, uh, it's not really a circle, but it's not really a side. You got to make sure that it's, it's going to be floofy, I guess, all the way around with your tree material is probably the best way to say it. So um, feel free to twist the trunk in any way you want. Um, just get it into a shape that, that looks somewhat tree-like. Okay, now because we are dealing with an injection plastic here, it is shiny. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is make it not shiny. And here's one that I have, have already worked on. The colors are very subtle, so it's difficult to see. But what I've done is I've taken some spray paint, two colors, uh, an olive drab and a sort of a charcoal color and I have simply spray painted them. So there is the olive drab, and here is the, the charcoal color. Um, now this is a testers, it is 1265 flat olive drab. So you military guys will have some of that, and you modelers should have two, it's a pretty good color. The other one is a, uh, I believe this is a Tamiya color, yep, Tamiya color, it is TS4, which is a German gray. So these two colors together make up a, a nice doll color for your tree trunk. Now, if you go out and you look at your trees, I guarantee you, you are going to notice that they are not brown. Um, I know that the the common, you know, when you when you finger paint trees, so to speak, as kids, you make the trunks brown and then you make the, the leaves green, right? That is not the color of most tree trunks. Usually it's more gray than anything. So between the olive, which would be kind of a mossy looking color and the, the gray, you sort of get a realistic tree trunk, but that's not gonna be enough. Um, we're going to have to take it another step. Now, when I do this, I don't necessarily take a whole lot of time um, in, in making my colors necessarily um, uniform, let's say. So I'll show you what I do here in just a second. Okay, folks, so we are over at what I am calling my spray booth. It is just a, an old Walther's box, uh, lightly propped up, in a well-ventilated area so that I don't asphyxiate myself. And there is my trunk. Now, what I'm going to do, I am starting off with my olive drab. And I'm just going to hit it real quick. And then I'm going to flip it over. I don't really care about dry. I'm not really 100% worried about my finish on this step. And I'm focusing mainly on the bottom. Why? Because, well, the top is going to be covered in foliage. And I don't really care what is underneath. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to bother waiting for that to dry. Because, once again, that is not important to us. And I'm going to hit it with our German Grey. Uh, how you do that on yours it doesn't really matter. I am, uh, whether you do an upward stroke, downward stroke, this one just works for me. And what we're trying to do is knock down that plasticky look and we're also trying to 
bring out a little more realistic color. So uh, that is going to be our starting point, but we need to bring out the detail a little bit. So we'll go back over to the workbench and bring out some trunk detail. Okay, so some trunk detail. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our old faithful. We're going to go to the Tamiya panel liner. It is simply a black wash, nothing fancy. Um, so I'm not going to get too excited about you know what it looks like um, as far as um, hitting this tree. But uh, we're going to set the brush. It does come with a very small micro uh, brush as part of the lid. We're going to drain that out uh, because the uh, the straw here does hold material. And we're set that aside. And we're going to use a just a flat brush. And we're going to go over our tree. And what it's going to do is, because it is a wash, it is going to sink into the details of our tree and bring out the molded plastic details of the trunk that are in here. And it's going to, um, it's going to make it look a little bit more like wood, just because you're going to be able to see those details that otherwise are, are lost. Plus, it helps if you did not uh, cover everything in spray paint, which you saw how fast I spray painted the, the trunk. Uh, if you did not cover everything, uh, this will sort of dull down that color a little bit so that you don't have a plastic shine uh, to, your, to your tree. Okay, so we are going to set that to dry now that we've, that we've done that. And what you're going to... And make sure you don't miss anything. I don't know how well it's going to show up on there, but um, if you can see that, um, what it's going to do is it's going to settle in the crevices of your tree trunk, and it's going to bring out those those low those low lights, basically those low details. So obviously, if we've brought out the low lights, our next task is to bring out the highlights, right? So once this dries. We're going to go to that step. Okay, so now that our tree trunk is basically ready to go here, uh, everything's dried. We've added the dark tones to bring out the uh, details in the trunk. We have our uh, gray and our all drab on here. Now we want to bring out the highlights. And all of these steps are really more for trees that are going to be visible. So if you have trees that are sort of buried, uh, they're sitting in the background, you probably don't need to do all of these steps. Uh, but this is the final step that we're going to do. And here is a very inexpensive uh, acrylic paint. You can I find these at Walmart, um, but I'm sure other places and craft stores probably have them as well. It's just a, it's called Apple Barrel. Uh, but what I have here is white. And I'm going to put a small amount here on our, on our tray. And I say a small amount because I'm only doing two trees. And if you are doing more trees, then, you know, might need, might need a little more paint. But um, we're going to do a dry brush technique. This is very similar. Uh, it is exactly the same, actually, as what we are going to do uh, when you would do a, a rock casting and you'd want to bring out the uh, highlights of the rock. So we're going to take some of our paint here, load up our brush, and then we're going to uh, wipe most of that off. And we're just going to dry brush over the uh, details that are already on our uh, tree trunk. And what that's going to do is that is actually going to bring out all of the colors that we've added so far and make the tree sort of pop as far as detail goes. And you're looking for a result similar to, to that. Um, so you wanna bring all of that detail out that's on the uh, molded in place there and feel free to go all the way up the tree. Now, the molded detail really stops about uh, three quarters of the way up. And the top of this is just basically rough plastic but uh, that's not to discourage you from doing the dry brush technique because you will pull out uh, it's plastic detail basically but uh, it will uh, it'll pull out some texture which is uh, still still decent so we're gonna hit all of our trees with this technique and you don't need 
you don't need a good expensive paint for this because a lot of this is going to end up getting buried when we put the foliage on anyway so don't don't waste say a vallejo or something like that you can use a an inexpensive craft paint to, to do this as long as you can get enough of it on the brush um and and use it as a dry brush it'll work so that's what you're going to want to do and this is really not necessarily improving the tree trunk it's just bringing out the detail that otherwise would be hidden uh, because it's it's molded in place and it's just not it's just not easily visible in the in the dark color of the plastic so you're going to have to do this to every tree that you want on your foreground because this is going to give your tree that that hero status uh, and what I mean by hero status is uh, it, it's the tree that you're going to see up front. It has all the detail. It's going to get your uh, viewer's attention. So you don't want to bury it in the, you don't want to do all this work and then bury it in the background necessarily because this is going to give your tree uh, a pop that a background tree is not going to need. So if you don't want to spend your time, you know, modeling trees, um, I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend doing that but when you when you get when you get done here this is kind of what you end up with it brings out the trunk detail and it makes the tree sort of come alive a little bit here as far as you know, all that detail now is visible and as you look at it you can always touch up a little bit here if you need to so use a nice flat brush soft brush with a uh, little bit of paint on it very minimal make sure you do a good dry brush and you can bring those details out. So we're gonna hit the other tree and then on to foliage. Okay, so just a real quick show of what you're looking at here. These are the finished trunks. So now you can see the detail. You can see that little knot in the branch, uh, the trunk there. You can see we've got the low lights, the highlights, and we have a trunk that looks a lot better than when we started off with something like that. So we've, 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 we've come a ways here in bringing out that detail and making the, the trunk look a lot better and ready for foliage. Okay, so we're keeping it in the family here and we've gone to woodland scenes once again and we're using hobby tack adhesive. So this is an interesting adhesive I have a love-hate relationship with and why is it works. So it's a good product. Um, but it tends to get on everything and it's sticky and it just makes a mess and I, I don't know it's just it's it's kind of awkward is, is, a, is a good way to look at it but um, if you don't receive a broken one you will have a brush on the end of your uh, on the end of your setup here uh, mine came damaged uh, which is which is all the first one I've ever had like that uh, and that has required me to get a regular brush and apply this with a regular brush so not a big deal uh, minor inconvenience but what you do is you take this and you apply it to your branches uh, where your foliage is going to stick to now you are only going to put this on the top of your branches. You don't want to have it on the underside because we don't want anything to stick to the underside of our tree. And that's just because in nature the branches and leaves are on the top because they are going for sun. We are going to keep it off the trunk because nothing sticks to the trunk of a tree. There's no branches, there's no leaves. So other than at the top, where we do want some additional, I'll call stickage, um, we are not going to cover anything else uh, but the tops of these branches. Now, this adhesive, although it is a very tacky adhesive, you know, hence the name, hobby tack, uh, it has to set first. So when it's in its uh, form here where it's white, uh, it's not ready to go. So. Put it on your trees and let it sit until that becomes clear. Once it becomes clear, it is super sticky and it is ready for you to apply your adhesive. So don't 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 rush this process. Let it dry. Let it set up first. It's not going to dry on you to the point where you can't work on it. Unless you, I mean, I, I don't even think if you leave it for a couple of days, it's going to get 
it's going to get funky on you. So uh, get your adhesive on there where you're, where you're going to have your foliage, and then uh, then step away and let it uh, let it dry until it is clear and super tacky and ready for you to to work on with it. So we're going to let those get set up, and then we'll be back. this which means the glue is dry you can see there's a shiny area where it's at there's a few white globs where the glue is a little bit heavier that haven't fully set yet but there's enough of it that is ready to go that we're going to start and i'm going to do two trees and i'm going to do them two different ways and the reason i'm going to do two different ways is because i don't know what material you guys will have available and i want to get two different options for for trying to do this so option number one we are going to go with another Will and Scenics product, so keeping it in the family here, and we are gonna go with Lichen. This is a spring green mix that I'm using, and the material looks sort of like this. It is a natural product, uh, but it, uh, it comes in different colors, and they have it dyed in different colors, and what this is really good for is branches. It looks like, it looks like branches or, or brambles, or uh, I've used it for both ground cover and for, for trees, and this is not going to be our final step, obviously, but it adds some of the volume that your current armature does not have. So I picked this spring green mix because it's just lightly green and it's still kind of brown and kind of gross looking, So, um, which a spring tree would look like. So, okay, but we're modeling fall and you got to remember that when trees turn uh, with the seasons, they don't turn all at once. So you are still going to have some green but the green is dying, you know, it's, it's changing. So you need to make sure that you don't have necessarily a vibrant green uh, on, on most of your trees because there's not going to be a vibrant green color anymore, uh, depending on how late into fall you are modeling. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently tease this apart. Uh, I ripped some pieces off just because I want smaller pieces to work with. And my goal is to tease it into almost like a mat and then simply take that mat and attach it to my armature. Now, I don't want any parts that are gonna be hanging down low unless you're trying to model some sort of a, uh, uh, a weeping cherry, weeping willow, something like that. Um, that's, that's, not gonna help, that's not gonna help you out. All we're trying to do is add some volume to our tree so that when we go to the next step, um, it looks a little more full. So, I'm just going to take this material, I'm going to tease it apart. You can look at it and see if it's going to hold the shape that you want. If it's not going to hold the shape that you want, you can uh, find another piece. Just like working with the super trees, you can find another tree uh, piece that will look a little bit better. So we're going to add this and just sort of get that volume to our tree. now. One other thing that I that I should point out is when you're doing this, it doesn't have to be uniform. In fact, it would be better if it's not, and it would be better if you worked in smaller pieces as opposed to larger pieces, only because you're not trying to fill your tree in. You're just trying to give it some give it some more finer branches. Okay, to get rid of the 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 solid sort of look that, that, that these armatures have and make it a little more airy and a little more open. So you're going to want to cover most of your branches, your big branches with these finer filaments to give that, uh, give that appearance. Now, once you get to a certain point and it's going to be at your discretion, when you feel like you have enough branches on there that, that your tree looks full, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go back and you're going to see that you have some areas that are sort of loose hanging. You can do one of two things. You can either try to get them tucked in and glued into place so that they, they're not loose hanging, or you can remove them. So depending on the, the piece and where it's at, it might be better just to remove that piece. And if that piece was a big piece and now you look bare, go back in with something a little bit smaller and get it tacked in, in place. Now, the stuff where it's hanging down here like this, this does not, this is not what a tree would do, it wouldn't hang like that. So you're simply going to either rip that piece off, cut that piece off, whatever you're gonna do, get your tree back in, into shape basically. Um, and 
Once you're done with that, once your tree branches aren't sagging and you have all of them sort of reaching up towards the sun like a, a tree naturally would, you are ready to start the next step. Now, the next step is there are options in how we're going to approach this. Um, before I do that, in, in showing the, the leaf technique, because it's going to be the same for both products, let's show you what you can do if you have leftover woodlands seed. I'm sorry, if you have leftover Scenic Express pieces from Super Trees. Okay, if you're like me, you have leftover tree parts from Scenic Express. And what I mean by leftover tree parts is, well, you can't really make a tree out of this because it's either flat on one side or the shape is just funky or it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't really look like a tree. So you can't, you can't carve a tree out of some of these pieces. They're just, they're, they're scrap, essentially. And hopefully, you didn't take your scrap pieces and throw them out because, one, they make great ground cover, just in general, if you want to do briars or, or something like that. And two, you can use them in this step. So, if you haven't figured out what we're going to do already, uh, then follow along here as we're going to take these branches off of this tree, uh, this tree part, I guess, and we are gonna use these to be our finer branches on the Woodland Scenics armature. Now, this is gonna give us the exact same sort of uh, appearance that we had on the, with the lichen, but it's a little finer detail. So you're gonna need either more parts or you're going to need to be a little more uh, Studious is how you apply them just because um, they, uh, they they don't have the same sort of coverage. So they're a little more uh, exposed, which means what you do is going to be a little more visible. So uh, what I mean by that is when you take a piece of this material, like this is a nice, this is a nice top piece, right? So when you take this and you place it at the top of your tree, it is going to be very obvious that it's attached. Okay, so it, it's going to sort of stand out in, in a very finite way here where you can see where all the branches end and uh, it's just the detail is, is smaller. So when you apply these, you're going to need to be a little bit more careful because they do have a, they do have a different shape to them. And you don't want to get a branch that looks like it's in a funky direction or or something like that because when <laughs> it's gonna look it's gonna look weird so be careful how much of the actual stick you place on the on the tree but this is a great use for these leftover materials that you really can't you, you can't use them anywhere else because quite frankly they're just they're not going to uh they're, they're just not going to work uh as they are on their own one step you can do if you don't like the natural color of these uh, twigs, you can do a couple of things. One, you can pre-paint these things um, so that they have a, uh, a color to match the rest of your tree. Um, or you can uh, not paint your tree until after you've already put some of these on uh, so that everything gets coated in the same color. Uh, we're going to show you why I didn't do that here. But... Those are options in case you were wondering. Um, so feel free to experiment with that. Now, just like in our uh, lichen version here, uh, we wanna get all of the branches facing upwards. We don't want anything just sort of drooping down. And what we're trying to do is fill in that finer detail of the tree where branches would be um, have, holding leaves, um, but wouldn't be these real thick pieces. So we're trying to bring some volume. Don't forget, I keep saying this, and it's very, very important. Otherwise, your trees are going to look really funky. Make sure the branches are always looking up. They need to look up because in nature, everything grows towards the sun. And so these plants are, are you know, trees are no different. They are growing up towards the sun. And we need to make sure that we model it in, in that way. So I'm going to keep adding some pieces here, but uh, you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm filling in the structure of this tree for use in the next step. So uh, I'm going to finish this up and then we'll be back. I'll show you how to put leaves on. Okay, so here are our two tree armatures.
filters and the options that you've got. And as you can see, the lichen is thicker. It fills it in. I'm going to say better if that's what you're going for. And obviously, the Seek Express Super Trees parts are thinner and, and, and wispier. So you're going to get two different results with this depending on what you do. Now, if I was leaving these as bare trees and that I was not going to uh, put any additional leaves on it, I would probably dye these a little bit different. I don't know that if I would, I would use these as bare like winter trees or just they're too thick. If you had some of these, this could be a winter tree. Um, if you maybe even want to put a little snow on the branches or something like that. Um, but for us, we are still modeling a season where there are leaves on the trees. So we're going to use Super Leaf. This, these are scale trees. It is by the fine folks at Scenic Express, the same people that bring you the super trees. And the other thing that I'm going to be using is a Bachman. It's just a blended turf. It's a very fine and it is late fall. Um, and that just makes a really nice fall tree. So I have several different colors that I'm going to be using here. They also come in, in bags. Uh, it's an eco pack and I guess saves the world, no plastic or whatever it's, you know. So the, the hippies have taken over the modeling industry as well. But you get these little shakers. I find them usually at uh, trains, uh, shows, but you can, you can get them online as well. And the next thing you're gonna want is a big bucket to work over. Cause as you sprinkle these over, not everything is gonna catch and you end up with a lot of leftover stuff. And this stuff is 100% reusable. So no sense in wasting scenery material. You can either use it on the ground as ground cover underneath your trees, or you can put it back on the tree. Be careful what colors you get mixed in if you're going to use it back on the tree. And the reason is because you're not going to have a tree that's going to have necessarily reds, greens, yellows, um, all on the same tree. Usually they are, certain trees turn certain colors. So um, be careful what you mix in here just because you don't want to get a, a, a unrealistic look. Okay, to make this stuff stick, we are going to the tried and true method. Scenic Cement, Woodland Scenics, you can you can use that, um, but I'm not going to lie to you, this is not Scenic Cement in this bottle anymore. It is my own concoction, it's just a little bit of dishwashing detergent to break down the surface tension of the water, and white glue, heavily thinned uh, with water. You can also use matte medium, I do suggest matte medium, it's a nice adhesive as well. You mix it in the same way and then you are going to simply spray your trees. Now, I don't think I have to show you how to spray the trees because all you do, squeeze the trigger, hit the tree, and you're good. Uh, I'm gonna do that over the sink so that I don't make a mess all over my workbench, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we have applied the scenic cement mixture to our uh, tree here, and we're just gonna take some of this leaf material and we're going to dump it over the top. And once again, I'm working from the top because when the leaves will be on the top, I sprayed this thing from the top. Once I'm sure I've got enough coverage, I just take it upside down and I give it a good shake. Anything that has come loose, you're going to want to reapply so that it is in position. And when you're done, you will get a tree that looks something like this. I know I lost a couple pieces here. Let me fix that up, get that back on place, and I will show you the end result. Okay, so that is the end result of our lichen trees. Uh, we get to use the um, super tree full leaf, which gives this a nice texture that I think is better than your clump. Um, it gives a little more airy appearance. One thing that I should mention, and uh, I kind of forgotten, it's pretty important, and that is that these uh, trees were put on with hobby tack, which is water soluble. So when you spray your tree, uh, your lichen, um, don't soak the thing because it will uh, it will release the hobby tack. I don't know if you saw some pieces falling off. Um, totally my fault. I forgot. Um, so that was a that was an error. Um, but. Um, 
that is the result you're going to get from your trees. Um, this was my um, this was my first tree that I used this method on, and I'm happy with the result. Although I think what I will do in future trees is I'm going to spread that lichen out just a little bit thinner because this is still it's still a little too clumpy for me. Um, so I want this open a little bit more. So this is going to probably be a, a tree that sits in the second second row of, of trees. Now, let's go ahead and do our tree that has the Scenic Express armatures on it. Okay, I wanted to uh, apologize in this segment. I realized in the last few segments I didn't have my microphone on, so I was just talking into the, the phone. Uh, so the audio probably wasn't fantastic. So um, my bad. Uh, shit happens. I got too excited about uh, making trees. Okay, so now uh, I have two tree options here. And on the left, you're seeing the Woodland Scenics armature that has the super tree uh, pieces on it. And on the right, you're seeing a Woodland Scenics armature with the Woodland Scenics uh, lichen. And then you've got the, on both, you have the Scenic Express leaves. Now, I know as you're looking at this, you go, well, shit, the super tree on the left still looks good. And it looks probably better than the tree on the right. I would agree with you. Uh, I still think that the, the Scenic Express super tree armatures makes a better looking tree. However, I think this improvement on the Woodland Scenics armature with the lichen... Uh, I, that is, to me, that is an acceptable tree. I wouldn't mind having that uh, in a little closer range because it does look it does look better. It brings out the texture a little bit better, and it looks better than the um, just clump foliage, which just I, I just I don't I don't like that method. I think that just doesn't it doesn't look right to me. But um, those are, those are some options I think you can use to, to really improve the Woodland Scenics uh, armatures and make them, make them pretty, pretty awesome, make them pop a little bit more on your layout. So uh, whatever you have available to you, um, either of these options is good. I have a bag. I think there's 40-some trees in that bag. So I'm going to go ahead and start making me some trees and bring fall time to the upper uh, peninsula of the Allegheny Northern. Hope you guys found this video at least somewhat interesting and useful for your own layout. Don't forget, uh, just because I'm modeling autumn doesn't mean you have to uh, as well. Uh, this is technical work for pretty much any color, any season, anything you want to do. And there are some various options. As I'm experimenting with this, if I come out with an option that I think might in some way be useful to you, I will make sure to share it with you so that you can use it as well.